Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we're going to do a little short video, um, a Bible study. We're getting prepared for the greatest commandment. Love the Lord thy God with all thy soul. But we just did a study and some brethren are catching up because I put out two hour videos last week and I understand the brethren are watching other uh, men of God preaching the word of God. Everyone's trying their best to do the, you know, to serve God despite all the division. There's still men whose heart, you know, they're still trying to live for the Lord and everyone's trying, to, there's some men in ministry that are preaching the word of God. And I've always pushed this both because we watch more than one person. So make sure you're watching more than one person. Three, four. Uh, I have a hard time following hardcore, following, you know, more than three, three uh, preachers. But that being said, the Lord put it on my heart and said, there's something you really need to mention about as we're getting into loving the Lord with all thine heart. There's something that comes a little bit before that. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about trusting God with all thine heart. Remember, we're to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. What is it? Taking God's word, hiding it in your heart, and living it. That's loving the Lord with all your heart. People always say, well, it's just a feeling. It's just a burning in the bosom. Uh, that's people that are all fleshly. Carnally minded, walking after the flesh. False converts. The Bible, Paul calls them false brethren. They're carnally minded, walking after the flesh. They're fleshly. Their idea of love is based off the flesh. Okay? The Bible definition of love is an act of your will. And true love for God isn't a fleshly feeling. True love for God is taking His Word, hiding it in your heart, and living it. But what do you need to do before you do that? See, we're going to take a step back. Trusting God with all thine heart. Turn to Proverbs 3.5. And your King James Bibles. Get your King James Bibles out. God's perfect written word in English. I'm going to have it turn to Proverbs 3, 5. And then we're going to go through all these other verses. Doing, I'm just putting out a couple short videos this week. To let brethren get caught up on Bible studies. Whether mine or other brethren's Bible studies. Hey, but Proverbs 3, 5. We talked about this before. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. How do you love the Lord with all your heart? By taking God's word and hiding your heart and living it. What's the step that comes before that that, that I didn't mention? Well, I might have a little bit, but we're going to go through the scriptures. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You got to trust that this is God's perfect written word. You got to believe it. You got to trust God. You got to trust His word. God knows what He's doing. I don't always know what I'm doing, but God always knows what He's doing. You got to trust God. He knows what He's doing. There's sometimes you come across something and you're like, really? Really? Trust God. Trust God. Brothers and Christ, when I do my Bible readings and I do my Bible studies, I tell you this before, there's sometimes I come across over here where it's like, it says one thing, and then over here it says another, and I'm sitting here trying to just to rightly divide, and I'm having trouble. And I trust God. This Bible's perfect. I'm not going to correct this book. There's some brethren that fall into the, you know, get tempted and fall into the trap of, well, I'm going to ch change the meaning of God's Word. I'm going to replace God's Word with another word. No, we need to trust God. And you keep praying on it, and praying on it, and God will open your eyes, and He has. A lot of my struggles with, with, with trying to discern between two different passages that seem like they're contradicting one another, God has shown me the truth. Okay, He's revealed, He's helped me with rightly dividing. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Loving God with our heart, putting God's Word in your heart, and living it means that you're trusting God. He knows what He's doing, and what He says is true. It's truth. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And here's what gets in the way. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Like I said, when I'm trying to discern between this and this, I can get in the way of my own man's wisdom, world's wisdom. Well, a better rendering would be... Uh, the Hebrew word here, or the Greek word there, and it can also mean this, and it can also, Yea, hath God said, when we try to figure out this book on our own, we just got finished doing a, a psalm by the, the fireside where it says you need to take everything to God. That includes your Bible studies and your Bible reading. Take it to God in prayer. Say, Lord, I'm not getting this. How do I reconcile the two? How do I understand? How do I rightly divide 2 Timothy 2.15? How do I rightly divide this? Lean not on thine own understanding. That's, get, that's the number one thing that gets in the way of trusting the Lord with all your heart. 
when you try to get in the way and you try to use the world's wisdom, man's wisdom, to try to explain things instead of coming to God and seeking His wisdom. Trust the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on thine own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge Him. What's the whole point of trusting His Word? What's the evidence of trusting His Word? That you trust God? And all thy ways, all my ways that I go, I acknowledge Him. Am I doing it His way? Am I living His way? Am I pleasing God? I acknowledge God in everything that I do. And all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. He's running. Okay, he's, he's driving the boat. He's driving the train. He's driving the bus. Whatever you want to use. He's the one that's in the driver's seat. He's in charge. He's got everything under control. He will direct our paths. He will tell us to go to the, where to go, what to do. And He does it by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. Because we have the perfect written Word of God today. Acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. Verse 7. I don't read verse 7 together with this that often, but the Lord had me do it this time. It says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Would we just read in verse 5? And lean not on thine own understanding? <clears throat> Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That goes hand in hand. If you fear the Lord, you depart from evil. If you're not departing from evil, it's because you don't fear the Lord. But be wise not in thine own eyes. What happens when people become wise in their own eyes? They seek their own understanding. The Bible says men will start handling the word of God deceitfully. Or they'll wrestle, and Peter, they'll wrestle the scriptures to their own destruction. They're trying to get this book to conform to them. They're trying to understand this book through the flesh, through the spirit of the world. We talked about that, and loving you know, God with all your heart, that spirit of the world. There's the spirit of Jezebel, that, that, uh, the, people talk, call him feminism. you got the spirit of the world, which is the antichrist spirit. Okay. you got the spirit of man. Okay. This flesh. But the Bible says this book is spiritually discerned. It requires the Holy Spirit. It requires trusting God, being patient, waiting on the Lord. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Remember we read this in the Bible, that the whole, this is the whole duty of man. I can't remember if it's in Ecclesiastes the preacher or if I got that out of Isaiah. But this is the whole duty of man. Fear God and keep his commandments. What we just read here? Fear the Lord and depart from evil. What does his commandments do? His commandments is all about keeping us on the right path, to keep us in a right standing before God. Remember, righteousness has two different uh, definitions. There's righteousness, means you have a right heart with God, a right standing, not that you're sinlessly perfect, but you have a right standing in God, with God. He looks at you and goes, okay, I know you're a sinner, but your heart is right with me. We read that in the Old Testament, how men were called righteous. Okay. And then we get to the New Testament, and it says, There's none righteous, no, not one. Oh, that's a contradiction. Once again, you need to pray. And we need to trust the Lord. There are no contradictions in this book. Well, there's righteousness that has to do with sinless perfection. Yeah, when it comes to being sinless, there's none righteous, no, not one. But can you be in a right standing with God? We've always been talking about the heart lately. The heart, the heart, the heart. It's a heart issue. And what gets in the way? The head. The number one reason people miss uh, salvation. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. This gets in the way. They miss, they miss heaven by 13 inches. They have the knowledge of Jesus Christ, but they can never bring themselves to tr truly come to God with a broken and contrite spirit and true biblical repentance and believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. They just have the knowledge. What gets in the way? Their own understanding. Their own wisdom. Okay. Psalms 112.7 reads, He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is fixed. Is your heart fixed, brothers, this Christ? 
Do you trust the Lord? I, I'll, I'll call them out. Bible perversionists don't trust the Lord. Pagan religions don't trust the Lord. Brethren, there's some wolves in sheep's clothing that come in and say, I'm a King James Bible believer. I'm one of you. But their life says they don't trust the Lord. And they're always trying to change this. But I'm a Bible believer. But they're always changing this and going against this. That's not a Bible believer. That's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Trying to, a snake trying to slither his way in where he doesn't belong. Right? Our heart is fixed. This book is perfect. I trust God. If there's something in here I don't understand. I trust God. Right? And I pray about it. And I pray on it until God shows me the truth. Psalms 28, 7. Psalms 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. We go back to that verse that I can do all things through Christ with strength with me. And I remember, I always bring this up, Peter Ruckman, do you still sin? Well, yeah. So how do you explain that verse? It's not that difficult to explain. Through Christ. Are you going through Christ? Part of loving Jesus Christ is, he said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. It's taking his words, hiding it in your heart, and living it. Are you going through Christ? God will give you the strength to live the right way and do what's right. Are you going through the flesh? Let's point at the world. Are you going through this wicked body of flesh? When you sin, you're going through the flesh. When you sin, you're giving in to the world. You're going through the world. You're not going through Jesus Christ. We read here in Psalms 28, 7, The Lord is my strength and my shield. Are you going through the Lord? The Lord is my strength. There's a lot of songs that people love to sing about. The Lord is my high tower, my, you know, my rock, the rock of my salvation, everything. But are you actually going through the Lord? Or are you just part of the club and you've got your own understanding? Just part of the club. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in Him. And I am helped. You know, when you trust God and say, Okay, God, you know what you're talking about. I'm going to live your way. I trust you. You say this is how we're supposed to live. I trust you. This is perfect. This is your word. I trust you, Lord. God sent, That's when God really, you can see the help that God does in your life left and right. God helps me left and right. Okay. Everything I have is because of His mercy and His grace. All that I have. I thank God every day for how I live. I remember praying to God saying, Lord, I'd gladly give it up to be part of a face-to-face -face ministry, evangelism ministry, a, a house church ministry. If that's your calling, if it's what you want from me, I'd gladly give all this up. But He's helped me. And if He does call me to do that, He'll give me the strength to do it. Because it's Him calling me to do it. I'm going through Him. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise Him. Where are we getting this out of? Psalms? I'm in Proverbs right now, but Psalms? Over here. King David's singing it. I trust the Lord, and He's my help. God knows what He's doing. Romans 8.28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to His purpose. My heart trusteth in Him, and I am helped. We read that in Psalms 28, 7. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good. The thing is, is I'm going to call this out right now. A lot of preachers in Babel buildings misuse this verse because they're applying it to when you are in sin and wickedness. Well, God will chasten you. Oftentimes, God doesn't really have to hardcore chasing me. The Bible says, if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. There's already a consequence to sin. If you start getting into sin and wickedness, it's going to start messing up your walk with the Lord. There's going to be consequences. Your life is going to start getting miserable. Right. It's going to start falling apart because you're not walking with the Lord. But they'll say, well, all things work together for good. The chastening of the Lord's good. Yes, the chastening of the Lord's good. But notice the part that they always seem to leave out. To them that love God. 
What this verse is talking about, I'll read it all again. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. You get saved, the called. You get saved, you get born again, because you, you went and got saved God's way, the way He called us to. You know, that God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. And after God saves you, He gives you a new life. And that life is all about loving God. Taking His Word, hiding your heart, and living it. This is saying that, and we know all things work together for good to them that love God. When you take God's Word, hide it in your heart, and you're living it, you're doing things God's way, all things work together for good. Remember that? We did that analogy about a train. God's driving the train, and it jerks at the corners, or the bus makes a sharp right turn, you go flying this way, or you go flying. God's in charge. Okay? No matter what bumps in the road, what hills, what mountains we have to climb, what trials and tribulation we have to go through, it all works together for good to them that love God. Now, when I start doing my own thing, my own wisdom, my own understanding, or I start getting tempted by the flesh and the world, and I go off to the right, and I go off to the left, and all these bad things happen to me, that's not what this is talking about. Because I stop loving God and I start loving the flesh. I stop loving God and I start loving the world. That's not what this is talking about. To them that love God. You're doing right. You're living right. You can still go through bad times. You can still go through some hard times. But all things work together for good. Now if you're messing around with sin and wickedness and worldliness. You're not putting on the whole armor of God. And you're letting Satan get the better of you. That's not good. That's not good at all. Okay? Repent. Forsake. Get your heart right with the Lord. Get away from the world. Put the flesh down. Get into some... My advice is get into some um, fasting. Right? You'll be shocked at how fasting, when you're doing it for the Lord and you're spending the day, when you go fasting, you spend a day where you're not really working. Pick a day where you got a day off and you fast and you spend the day in, in prayer and God's Word, going for walks, little hikes, walks. And you're talking with the Lord. And you spend all that you spend most of the day with the Lord. You can still do some work, I do. But you spend your day with the Lord hardcore, mainly in prayer. Prayer and fasting. They go kind of they go hand in hand when you're really doing fasting for a good reason. Okay. Love God to them that love God, all things work together for good. Do you trust God? When you trust God, you start loving Him by putting His word in your heart. You trust this is perfect. And God says, okay, if you love me, then you'll take this word that you trust in that's perfect, you're going to hide it in your heart, and you're going to start living it. If you love me. All things work together for good to them that love him. Living God's way in, this last, in, this, in these last days, brothers of Christ, living God's way, we're going to be hitting bumps, road signs, uh, blockades, there's all kinds of things. The world's trying to get in the way of our walk with the Lord. Our flesh is trying to get in the way of our walk with the Lord. Satan's always trying to get in the way. And the devils, the evil spirits, they're all trying to get in the way of our walk with the Lord. That's why you put on the whole armor of God. You hide God's word in your heart. And you keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. You keep your eyes on that blessed hope. That's what keeps us going. Okay. Psalm 64.10 The righteous shall be glad in the Lord. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord. Remember, once again, it's not a contradiction. There's none righteous, no lot one. There's none that understand it. There's none that seeketh after God. They've all gone out of the way. They've together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good, no not one. It's talking about being sinlessly perfect. But when this is talking about having a right standing in God's heart, having a right heart with God. You trust God with all thy heart. You love God with all thy heart. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord. Their hearts right with God because they're taking God's word and they're living it. They're obeying it. They're fearing God and keeping His commandments. And it says here, and shall trust in Him. The evidence that you trust in Him is the righteous shall be glad in the Lord. That you're living a right life with the Lord. The Lord says, this is how we're, I'm supposed to live. I trust you, Lord. My flesh really wants this. The world's really telling me this is how I should live. But I trust you, Lord. This is what you say I'm supposed to live? 
That's how I'm going to live. I trust you, Lord. And you live right in God's eyes. Okay. The Bible talks about Jesus' righteousness being imputed to us. That's talking about His sinless perfection. His blood that was shed washes our sins away. And His righteousness is imputed to us. So when God looks at us, He sees His Son when it comes to the law of sin and death. And we get to go to heaven instead of going to hell. But there's times where Jesus, who is God, He'll look at us and say, That man has the right, right heart in my, in my eyes. Have you ever read Job? The book of Job? Yeah, that man is not sinlessly perfect, but his heart is right in my eyes. God's saying, he loves me, he fears me, he trusts me, he, he fears me and keeps my commandments. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. Those that are upright in heart, they trust the Lord, they trust his word, they love the Lord by hiding His Word in their heart and living it. They love God's Word. They don't just trust it, they love it. King David sings in the Psalms a lot about loving God's Word, God's commandments, Thy commandments. Thy words are pure words, as silver tried in the fire seven times. That might be in Proverbs, I hope I didn't get that messed up, but people sing about it, people talk about it, their love for God's Word, how great God's Word is. I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. The upright in heart shall glory. What's that glory in? The Lord. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord. Over here it talks about, but he, uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 27 but God hath chosen the fullest things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Remember we just read about there? Understanding, your own understanding, being wise in your own eyes. That's what this is talking about. But God hath chosen the fullest things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to not things that are. Why? That no flesh should glory in His presence. All glory belongs to God. Not to mankind, not to this wicked world, to God. But of Him are ye in Christ Jesus. That's the definition of a Christian, in Christ Jesus. And what does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? Who have God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Someone who's saved, what's the difference between us and the lost world? That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Not just in words, but in deed, the way you live your life. Do you trust God? Does your life show it? The righteous shall be glad. They're called righteous not because they claim that they're righteous, but they're living a life where they're fearing God and keeping his commandments. What's the number one command today, brother says Christ? Obey the gospel. Are you living the gospel? Does God get all the glory? The upright in heart shall glory. Are you doing things that you should... A, you should uh, first, I, I came across some brethren that they were doing things that they can't give God glory in because it's worldliness, it's wickedness and sin. It goes against God's word. But boy, did they prove me wrong. They, they still can seem to try to give God glory for it, but God won't take glory for sin and wickedness and worldliness. You gotta give God glory, and if you can't give God glory in what you're doing, you shouldn't be doing it. It's that simple. 1 Thessalonians 2 4. But as we were allowed to allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God with trieth our hearts. Are we trying to go under our own understanding? Are we trying to be wise in our own eyes? Are we trying to be men pleasers? Let God be true, let every man be a liar. Are we trying to be men pleasers? World pleasers? Self pleasers. That's where you get the own understanding and wise in your own eyes. Self pleasers. Some guys like to brag that they're not, I'm not, I don't try to please the world, I'm not respectful. Yet they look in that mirror and that pride, but the end of that, they, they elevate that man in the mirror. With trieth our hearts, 
Do you trust God? We're supposed to preach the gospel. Remember the, 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 the bus or the train ride? We're along, the, we're along for the ride doing the work of the Lord. We're planting seeds. We're preaching the gospel. We're preaching the word to brothers and sisters in Christ. We preach the gospel to the lost world. We preach about hell, heaven and hell, and the cost of sin, and, and the gospel to the lost world. And we keep living for Jesus Christ. We don't get caught up in the world. Remember, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We don't get caught up in the world. I'm not here to, to, to bring nations under God. I'm not here to fix nations that are heathen nations. I'm not here to control the market, the stock market, the economy, you know, the one world order, the one world religion. I'm not here for any of that garbage. <coughs> Forgive me. I'm here just to do the work of the Lord until He calls me home. And that's what you're here for, brothers and Christ. We're here to do the work of the Lord and live for Him and please Him until He calls us home. Do you trust the Lord? Remember, He trieth our hearts. He looks at the heart. There are, there are people out there that try to deceive God. Uh, we read stories of Jonah. He thought he could run from God. He thought he could talk himself out of conviction. God's calling him to Nineveh. I know we still haven't done that study yet. Are you in Tarsus when God called you to Nineveh? Because there's a lot of brethren in ministry that go and do what they want to do, and they reject doing what God called them to do. And I started doing that and failing that. I started trying to do what I wanted to do versus doing what God was calling me. But you have Jonah, he's running to Tarsus, and he's convincing himself. He's probably talking himself out of conviction, saying, Nah, God's not really calling, my, calling me to Nineveh. He's calling me to Tarsus, so I'm going to go to Tarsus. But the Bible says he fleed from God, heading to Tarsus. He thought he could hide from God. He thought he could run from God. God tried the hearts. God said, uh, don't talk yourself out of conviction, and you're not going to Tarsus, you're going to Nineveh. There's times, Brother Says Christ, we try to talk ourselves out of conviction. We try to talk ourselves into the, the way we're doing something. Uh, the, the brethren I'm talking about, they were trying to praise God and give God glory for Hollywood movies, TV shows, video games, anime, satanic style music. Well, I can give God glory for... They can talk themselves out of conviction and they can wrestle the scriptures to their own destruction. Right? Handle the word of God deceitfully. They try to get this book to conform to how they want to live so that then they can say, see, I'm okay with what I'm doing. God looks at the heart. God try at the hearts. They don't trust God. People like that that grab worldliness and wickedness and sin and they try to justify it in the Bible, they don't trust God. But this is Christ, we're to trust God. Jeremiah 17.5 says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. You know, lean on thy own understanding, be wise in thine own eyes. We talked about being man pleasers. You have that cult of personality where Paul got onto him. I'm of Paul. Some of you say I'm of Paul. Some of you say I'm of Paulus. I'm of this man. I follow this man. I've seen people just parrot PWC. They'll parrot what this man said behind the pulpit. But when I sat down with them to try to do a Bible study with them, I said, let's stick to the Bible. Let's see what the Bible has to say. But so-and-so said this. You're just a liar. They won't listen to this. They listen to that man behind the pulpit. They listen to the man behind the camera. Don't take my word for it. Do a good study on trusting the Lord. There's a huge study. I just put a small thing together real quick. There's a lot on trusting the Lord. There's so much on trusting the Lord. You can make 50 studies and still not be done going all over the Bible using different verses. There's so much on trusting the Lord. Do the study for yourself. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. We can fix everything. We can make things right. I'm looking for that blessed hope. We're going to get called home and someday Jesus is coming back and He will set things right. He will make everything right. But we're to look for that blessed hope. Not the second coming of Jesus Christ. The blessed hope, the day of Christ. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. They stop trusting in the Lord with all their heart. They, start, they stop loving the Lord's word with all their heart. That's loving God with all their heart. Tr they start trusting man with their heart. They start loving men, men's ways, men's words, men's wisdom. 
Be not wise in thine own eyes. Isaiah 47.10 we read, For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, None seeth me. A lot of times people think they're doing things in secret. God sees. Even with brethren, you think you're, when you fall to the left or you fall to the right, you think no, nobody's watching, nobody's seeing me do anything. God sees you. And it will come to light at the judgment seat of Christ. If you don't get that repented, get it out of your life and get your heart right with the Lord. We're all going to get to see it at the judgment seat of Christ. None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. Why? Because it's man's wisdom. It's thine own understanding. You have head knowledge. But it's not down here. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else besides me. It goes back to Genesis. What Satan offered Eve in the garden. Ye can be as gods, knowing good and evil. You can be the final authority. You can make your own decisions in life. You should trust yourself. You ever heard that saying, trust your own heart? You see that a lot. Like, no, 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 no. The heart is, we, we talked about the heart of man. The imagination of man's heart is only evil continually. Who can know it? God does. His word does. That's why we hide God's word in our heart to push the wickedness out. That our heart naturally generates. You don't trust in your own heart. Has said in thine heart, I am. That's a title for God. And none else besides me. Satan wants to be God. He's a counterfeit. Jesus Christ. That's who the world as a whole, that's the one world religion we see today. It's a counterfeit Christ that they're, they're worshiping. They're not worshiping the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. They're worshiping Satan as the I am. He's a counterfeit. But what does Satan offer us? You can be his gods. When you, put, when you see people that claim Christianity, but they themselves are the final authority, they're, tr they're worshiping themselves. They're treating themselves as if they are the God, their own God. If you truly worship the capital G God, the one true God, the Father, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, you trust Him, and you take His word, love Him, hide it in your heart, and you live it. He is the final authority. You fear God, and you do your best to keep His commandments. The number one commandment, there is no doing best. The one number one commandment today is obey the gospel. Did you truly get saved and born again? Now you do your best to follow God with your heart. And the flesh will follow as long as you're hiding this in your heart and you're doing your best to live for Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's times we stumble, fall to the left, fall to the right, God, fall flat on our face. I've fallen flat on my face as a saved sinner. And God picks us back up. But God looks at the heart. It always, it always amazed me that you have men that at first I thought they were, you know, they seem to be saved. They have a good profession of faith in the mouth. But then you start seeing the life that they're living. They're not living a life of Christ. And the thing that amazed me is that when, you know, you, you think innocent. When I was newly saved, you, you're innocent. You just go up to them. I, I went up to some brothers and said, hey, that caught them playing some wicked, wicked video games. And bragging about it on Facebook. And I went to them with the scriptures and said, hey, the Bible says we're to abstain from all appearance of evil. They started getting hateful. And bitter towards me for quoting scripture to him. Yelling at me. Then I said, but the Bible says, put no wicked thing before thine eyes. That loving God is keeping his word. You guys are now getting mad at God's word and mocking God's word. I don't think you guys are saved. Brother says Christ, if God is the final authority, you need to trust in his word. You need to trust Him. You need to trust His Word. God's got everything under control. And when you trust God's Word, that's when you can love God's Word and hide God's Word in your heart and truly live it. Do you trust God? Or are you getting distracted by the world? There are brethren that have turned their back on the... The Bible doesn't say eminent, but it says looking present tense for that blessed hope. There's some brethren that have turned their back on it. Oh, God's not coming back for another five or ten years. They put off the blessed hope. They're no longer loving the appearing of our great God and Savior. They're no longer looking for that blessed hope. They've been talked out of it. 
They don't trust God. They're starting to trust themselves, their own understanding, their own wisdom, the world's wisdom. The world doesn't want us looking for that blessed hope with the life that we're living. That's why the gospel's not being preached as much as it should be among the body of Christ. Bible-believing, God-fearing men, actual saved brethren, body of Christ, the gospel's not being preached as much. Gospel tract isn't being done as much. Exhorting the brethren through the scriptures isn't being done as much. Loving your brothers and sisters in Christ isn't being done as much. Why? Because the world's doing everything it can to take our eyes off Jesus Christ. To stop trusting Him. Psalms 118.8 Men like to be their own gods. We said that. They themselves are the final authority. Trust, we're not to trust in man. Psalms 118.8 It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Brother says Christ, I do my best to exhort you through the scriptures and get you, and I'm, I've, I've talked with the Lord a lot. My big push in this ministry, words have meaning. Preaching the gospel. Exhorting the brethren. But my biggest push ever is trying to get the brethren to stay in the word of God, to trust it, to hide it in your heart, to live it. This man here can be fallible, but this is perfect. Without error. What is your foundation? What do you value the most in your life? What do you spend most of your time doing? Prayer and reading God's Word? Learning to hide it in your heart and live it? Or worldliness? Going after the flesh? It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. This world, all the fakes and frauds out there, remember the Bible says that Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. Why? Because in the Old Testament, Jesus is the angel of the Lord. An angel, that man. He's a counterfeit. He's always trying to counterfeit God. Angels are men. They're not women. They're not little babies. They don't have wings. They're men. They look like men. That's what angels look like. An angel of light. He tries to be like a man that's wise. When Jesus came, he was preaching nothing but truth. He spoke with authority. We always talk about Solomon and the wisdom that God gave him. Say, uh, Jesus' wisdom supersedes Solomon's wisdom by an amount that you can't even fathom. Satan's always trying to counterfeit God. And he comes around with his, and it says his ministers are also transformed into the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. you got all these false preachers out there against this book, against the real Jesus Christ. They don't want you to trust God. They'll say it, but they always push doubt. Well, a better rendering would be, there is no perfect written word of God. Oh, the word here, is, it, God chose this word, but we're going to change it and use another word. Or that old trick I've seen some actual Bible-believing, God-fearing men fall in the trap of doing, where they take the word, replace it with another word, then give you a definition of the word they just replaced it with. And they come back and try to hide it by saying, no, no, I'm just giving a definition of the original word. No, they're not. They're giving a definition of the new word. Because the original word, if they gave you the definition of the original word, it wouldn't go along with what they're trying to push. They basically sink their study. <laughs> you know, there's too many holes in the boat of that study that they're doing. It's better to trust the Lord than to put confidence in man. Romans 3, 4. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou might be justified in the sayings, and mightst overcome them when thou art judged. Brothers says Christ, someday we're going to have to stand before God. And we're going to be judged according to this book. At the judgment seat of Christ. We're not going to be going to hell. Hell's down there. We're not going to be going to hell. Okay. Jesus paid that price. But the Bible says, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. So then every one of us shall get an account of himself to God. There's the judgment seat of Christ, and then there's the great white throne where God's going to be judging. The world. The judgment seat of Christ, He's going to be judging those that are His. Okay. The body of Christ primarily, but some people say maybe the, the judgment of the Old Testament saints. The judgment of the Old Testament saints might have already happened, but mainly the judgment seat of Christ is predominantly pushed to us, the body of Christ, saying we definitely will be judged there. Period. There's coming a day. We like to think about all the bad things. 
being gone. But there's coming a day where we're going to get all called home and we're going to get judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Let God be true. Let every man be a liar. I've always said this. God is always right. And where I don't line up with God because he's right, I'm wrong. I'm always wrong when it's me. God is always right. You want to be right? Trust in the Lord. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Trust the Lord. Don't let the fear-mongering that's going on in this world and all the distraction in this world tear you from this book where you stop trusting God and you stop living for Him. You start falling into survival mode and this and that. Trust the Lord. We're going to go back to Proverbs 3, 5 and we're going to end it with 3, 5 again. We started with 3, 5, we're going to end with 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, brothers and sisters in Christ. And lead not on thine own understanding. That gets in the way. It'll always get in the way. God, what is your truth? Yes, I need, I'd like to understand this, but I want your wisdom. Your truth. I want you to open my eyes and show me the truth. I want you to give me the understanding. I don't want my flesh giving me the understanding. I don't want the world trying to give me the understanding. I definitely don't want Satan trying to give me the understanding. I want your Holy Spirit in me to open the scriptures and, Lord, show me the truth. And lean not on your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Lord, you know what you're doing. Lord, I trust you. Lord, Lord, can we get this done today? Lord, what about this? Lord, oh, thank you for what you did yesterday for me. Oh, Lord, we had an amazing, beautiful day yesterday. Got to go for a walk with you three times and talk with you. It was beautiful. It was an amazing day. Thank you, Lord. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your paths. That's how you stay on the straight and narrow. How do you fall to the left or right? You stop acknowledging him. You start trust, stop trusting the Lord with all thine heart. You start leaning on your own understanding. You start trusting your own strength. You start falling for the tra trap of trusting the world. And Satan comes by. We read in Revelation how Satan makes his promises. It says, talks about how he promises peace, but he brings war. You gonna trust him? The world does. The lost world. He's a liar. He's the father of it. Number seven. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear God, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. If you depart from evil, it's because you fear the Lord. If you're getting into sin and wickedness and worldliness, it's because something's gotten in the way to distract you from fearing the Lord. And you start being wise in your own eyes. You're not trusting the Lord with all thine heart. You're not acknowledging Him in all thy ways. Lord, brother and sister Christ, let this be an exhortation and a challenge. To try to read the Bible more. To hide it in your heart more. To pray more. To be there for your brothers and sisters more. Through exhortation, through preaching the uh, exhortation by giving them scriptures to encourage them. To give them strength. You know, to give them peace. So we're going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Trust God with all thine heart, brother and sister Christ. And I'll see you in the next study.